The quest for Africans to speak in one voice is gathering steam, with global corporations starting to pay attention to Swahili's rise as lingua franca in most of eastern parts of Central Africa, the language which is currently spoken by about 150 million people may soon become the first African language spoken across the continent. The latest sign of Swahili's rise, recently 16 Southern African countries agreed to adopt Swahili as a formal language in their region, providing impetus for a wider spread of one of the few shared African languages that is not colonial. My desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and hit the little red bell on the side to get notified every time I post. Welcome to Reason Africa. The majority of African nations fall within one of three colonial legacies of an imposed unifying language, Francophone, these are French-speaking nations, Lusophone are Portuguese-speaking or Anglophone which are English-speaking. However, in truth, Africa is home to approximately one-third of the world's languages, with anywhere between 2,000 and 3,000 languages. There are at least 75 languages in Africa which have more than one million speakers. The rest are spoken by populations ranging from a few hundred to several hundred thousand speakers. No other continent even approaches this human diversity in language. Swahili, a Bantu language, stands out from the rest, the most spoken and widely studied indigenous language in Africa. Its rise, development and spread also makes it the only African language in the African Union and has over 150 million speakers. It is the national and official language of Kenya, Tanzania and more recently Rwanda. Swahili's exponential growth makes it the lingua franca of the African continent, spoken as a second language by millions of people in Mozambique, Burundi, Zambia, Malawi, the Comoros Islands, the northwestern part of Madagascar, southern Arabian countries such as Yemen and Oman, as well as other parts of the world, making it Africa's most internationally recognized language. Swahili is derived from Sawahil, an Arabic word meaning people of the coast, and the language is known as Kiswahili to its speakers. It's relatively easy to learn Swahili. It doesn't use tones and unlike Arabic and Amharic, it uses the Latin alphabet. Some world famous Swahili words are Jenga, known by many people in the US as a block building game which means build, African American cultural festival Kwanzaa which means fast, the Lion King Simba means lion, Rafiki means friend, Hakuna Matata means no worries, Michael Jackson's Liberian girl Nakupenda Pia means I love you too. Swahili has easily spread across Africa partly because Swahili feels familiar to many Bantu speakers. Swahili is part of the Bantu language family which is spoken in in a very large area, including most of Africa from southern Cameroon, eastward to Kenya and southward to the southern tip of the continent. The population using Kiswahili in its expanding footprint out of Africa is not easy to tell. No comprehensive research has been carried out to establish this. However, it is known that Kiswahili is offered as a foreign language subject in many universities across Europe, America and the Middle East. The subject is said to be a popular choice for undergraduates in African studies who are required to study a foreign language for their graduation requirement. It is estimated that over a hundred universities in the USA, including the most prestigious ones, offer Kiswahili as a subject of study. Another important factor driving the international status of Kiswahili is the expanding circle in mass media. Kiswahili features in some of the world's leading radio stations such as the BBC Radio and BBC Television, Voice of America, Radio Deutsche Welle, Radio Moscow International, Radio China International, Radio South Africa, Radio Cairo and Channel Africa. Such examples offer us some perspective of the power and potential of a global use of Kiswahili. Apart from relaying information and informative programs, the radio and television stations offer entertainment in form of Swahili music, which is increasingly loved across the board. Tanzania's Diamond Platinum's music career has grown drastically all across the continent and the globe, thanks to his predominantly Swahili hip-hop style of music, which has made him one of Africa's most influential and one of East Africa's richest musicians. Such examples demonstrate that Kiswahili is attaining a prominent status. Swahili has been used in the past to shape understandings of the world about Africa. The challenge is to establish a sustainable global need and importance among other global languages. Africa and Africans should not continue to do business as usual. Rather, Africa and Africans have to assume their place in the global world and that language is one avenue through which they can assert their authority and cultural power.
If you believe Kiswahili will achieve a recognized global power in the near future, type Kiswahili Kitukuzwe in the comment section below and keep watching for the translation at the end of the video. Something important to note is that the growing world status of Swahili neither competes for, negates or invalidates the importance of any other African language. From the statistics, Swahili is leading the pack and by doing so has an opportunity to advocate for the development of other African languages. A language does not become global or universal because of the size of the population it serves, rather it is determined by the function it serves and the recipients of these functions. Around the 6th century, Swahili people began trading with the Arab, Persian, Indian, Chinese and Southeast Asian people in the Indian Ocean trade. Long before the first Europeans arrived in the area, several coastal city-states grew and flourished along the East African coast, which was dubbed Swahili Coast, a 2,500 km stretch of the Eastern African coastline and adjacent island archipelagos of the modern countries of Somalia to Mozambique. Swahili is spoken as a native language on the Swahili coast in the famous towns of Lamu, Malindi, Mafia Island, Kilwa Kisiwani, Zanzibar, Pemba, Mogadishu and Sofala. The ancient city-states of Lamu, Kilwa Kisiwani and the stone town of Zanzibar are now designated as World Heritage Sites. As trade intensified between Africa and Asia, these prosperous city-states were thriving hubs by the 13th century, 200 years before the arrival of the Portuguese. Trade goods passing through the ports of the coast included gold, ivory, iron, timber and slaves from the interior of Africa, and fine silks and fabrics and glazed and decorated ceramics were imported from outside the continent. This trade was made possible by the monsoon winds, which could reliably bring traders from around the Indian Ocean to and from the East African coast. Many of these goods passed through Swahili towns and into a hemisphere-spanning trade network through the Red and Mediterranean seas across the ocean to India, Persia and to China. Swahili thrived and spread despite initial resistance shown by missionaries who associated it with Islam. Letters written in 1711 in Kilwa Kisiwani are believed to be the first ever documents to be written in Swahili, but they were written in Arabic script. They are preserved in the historical archives of Goa, India, underpinning the regard in which Swahili is held. Through 500 years of colonial occupation, the Portuguese, Omani, the British, the Swahili culture that coalesced in the medieval period has persisted. Today, more than a million people in East Africa identify as Swahili. Mombasa and Dar es Salaam are today the largest port cities on the Swahili coast. Many Africans who visit, work or live out of Africa are often asked, do you speak African? Underpinning a monolithic misunderstanding of Africa as a country and not as a continent. I have addressed this extensively in a playlist, click here on the YouTube card to watch it next. Perhaps an effective way to explain this is to equate the question, do you speak African to another question, does anyone speak European or does anyone speak Asian or does anyone speak Australian or United Kingdom? Why? Because no one can speak a place. Maybe the response to the question, do you speak African, would be answered aptly, no, but I speak Swahili, an African common language. The spread of Swahili is demand-driven, especially among the business community, as international businesses look to expand into the African continent. US-based social networking site Twitter in 2018 officially recognized Swahili as a language, making it the first African language to achieve that accomplishment. Swahili speakers started tweeting away in Kiswahili without worrying that their tweets will end up being labeled as Indonesian, as was the norm. Netflix, the world's leading entertainment streaming service, introduced Swahili subtitles to its TV and film services, and also noteworthy, South Africa's Economic Freedom Fighters Party Julius Malema suggested Swahili be adopted as the language of the African continent. All steps in the right direction. However, it will take proper investment, political will and a thorough public education campaign to address the misconception that African languages are somehow inferior. Swahili will from the year 2020 be taught in South African classrooms. The push to embrace the Swahili language comes as African countries step up efforts to reform their education systems and re-evaluate strategies for mother tongue based education and to reduce over dependence on foreign languages. Prevention of the demise of African language is a Herculean task. We taunt and laugh at those who can't pronounce English words properly. It is with a heavy heart to note that some schools have resorted to the colonial style of enforcing an English or French-only environment in schools. 
students who are caught speaking their local languages or Kiswahili on school compounds are punished. If African languages such as Yoruba, Hausa and Zulu, to name a few, become extinct and gone forever, the understanding of African cultures will also inevitably become extinct. The conclusion these kids are drawing from such punishments is that their local language or Kiswahili is inferior, something that was enforced during the colonial era. Some perspective of the power and potential for a global use of Kiswahili is the recent massive online debate regarding Disney's trademark of Hakuna Matata, the phrase from the Lion King movie. While a few people thought the trademark was a smart move for the company to rake in profits off of it, an overwhelming majority, mostly Swahili speakers, cautioned African governments to take stronger steps to protect African culture. Acclaimed Kenyan author Ngugi Wathiongo said it would be like trademarking Good Morning or It's Raining Cats and Dogs in the case of English. He says Hakuna Matata is a common phrase we use every other day. No company can own it without the consent of the people who speak the language. A famous centuries-old story from the Bible is told of the construction of the Tower of Babel and subsequent dispersion of languages across the world. He tries to explain why there are so many different languages in the world. In the story, the whole world had one language. The tower was a grandiose project and would have been the ultimate man-made achievement. God observed what a powerful force the people's unity of purpose created and as a result, he confused their language, causing them to speak many different languages so that they wouldn't understand each other, therefore thwarting their plans. Without the ability to communicate through a common language, it is quite impossible for people to cooperate. Africa is confronted with this because of its dependency on foreign languages for communication, education, and trade. Empires can only be built where there is a common language. Mass adoption of Swahili will position it to compete favorably with other globalized languages of the world. In a continent with over 1.2 billion people and more than 2,000 languages, Swahili may face some headwinds to become Africa's common language, but as the numbers show, it is Africa's best bet. Kiswahili Kitukuzwe means all hail Swahili. Listen, if you'd like to have some better understanding of Africa and its countries, this video on the screen right now can help you to do just that. Click and watch that video and when you do, you're going to get so much insight about the continent. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.